Bonjour everyone. Welcome to another Diecast Showcase. So today it's going to be a little bit of a car show. I do enjoy um, finding a theme and uh, digging through the collection to find uh, matching castings to the theme aforementioned. So today's theme is definitely something that uh, if you're a fan of one-to-one -one cars and you like car mods and modifying cars and things like that, uh, for sure this is something that will at least slightly pique your interest. So we are talking about slammed cars. So I um, selected a quick variety of cars that uh, are pretty much in the three inch realm so let's say scales between you know the 160s to the 150s um and um yeah pretty much they're all slammed i, I did make some rules for myself slam doesn't mean basically a drag car that's slammed on the front but is has a huge rake and uh lifted back we're really talking about you know minimal rake to no rake whatsoever uh and it's just got to be you know the wheels have got to be inside those fenders basically so that's the rule i set for myself setting up this little selection of models and what we're going to do we're going to start with some more basic regular stuff moving slowly but surely towards uh the more premium stuff so let's get started without further ado so i thought i'd start really with something that uh you know, it's hit and miss amongst collectors for the most part. A lot of people don't partake in collecting these kind of castings. But let's start with a couple ca fantasy castings. Um, and we're going to start with uh, Hot Wheels, Main Lines. So first car we're going to be checking out to fill up this table here is going to be the infamous Hot Wheels La Troca. So it's based on an early 50s chevy pickup i believe it's all uh souped up in lowrider style you know you've got the big visor on the front it's definitely slammed those wheels do definitely tuck into those fenders so i think this guy does qualify um and it's casting it's really enjoyable as well good representation of the lowrider uh, culture and uh I don't know how many dozens of uh, color waves uh, that this has come out in, but all in all, really nice truck, nice slam stance, and of course it's a Hot Wheels mainline, so it does roll. We'll do a roll test for each, eh? Just for fun. So start off with La Troca and continue right on to the second and last fantasy casting we're going to be checking out, also from Hot Wheels, but this is one of my favorite fantasy castings that Hot Wheels does make. Um... We are talking about the So Fine, which is based on the 53 Buick Sedanet. Uh, it's going to be, obviously, very slammed. The wheels are within those fenders. So, again, this does qualify as for a slam car. I mean, it's kind of like the lead sled, low, slow and low and kind of... You know, just one of those cars that looks great slammed to the ground. Um, now Greenlight has been putting out some of these uh, Buick castings, but in licensed form. Uh, and they're a little bit lower than stock in appearance, but no way, nowhere as slammed as this thing could be. And obviously, you know, the uh, hideaway real, uh, rear wheel arches do help a whole lot. Now this one has been slightly detailed by myself, just add the front and rear lights. Uh... Because, I mean, you know, it just looks better that way. But overall, got some nice slammington going on here. So, these two fit really well together. Um, so, let's uh, dive into the actual licensed real castings. Oh, yeah, roll test. Yeah, it's so fine. I mean, you know, I won't uh, the Hot Wheels main lines, I don't think I need to roll test them. Because they do roll, you know. They're, they're Hot Wheels, after all. They're made for the track. Number three. This would be an early 50s Cadillac converted into a pickup. A little soapbox racer in the back, which is really cool. Uh, this was a thrift store find. Again, you know, it's got the front details. Nothing in the rear, but 
you got the, all this side bright work done and uh, that's a must for a caddy you know you can see the uh, uh, inception of the uh, with the instigation should I say of the uh, the rear uh, the rear uh, wings there that started growing the uh, you know that, that took uh, that, that basically culminated in 59 with the El Dorado basically with the fins just being as huge as they can possibly be so yeah roll it rolls fine it's a hot wheels again you know it just does what it needs to do and uh look at this purple color eh? it's really really good i mean this car's not mint you know thrift store fine so can't expect the best front axle is a little bit rusty but overall it is slammed look at that half almost half the wheels are up there in the fenders on the front and uh, you can barely see the wheels in the rear so that definitely works now uh, obviously you know uh, the rear fenders uh, being, you know, it, it being, uh, you know, hideaways, you know, the covered fenders. I mean, obviously, that does uh, help with the slammed look. How about we just go a little tiny bit forward in time to 1955 with this beautiful mystery models 1955 Chevy Bel Air that will not come into focus. There we go. So really cool tribal flame Dia de las Muertes kind of theme going on. Really cool paint job again. A little nod to the uh, lowrider culture. And uh, yeah, again, the 55 like this, this cast is just, it's got a little bit of rake, but it's still a slammed car basically. It sits low, especially on the front, and just you know, I think is a great uh, example of what a slam car should look like, basically. So, this one being a mystery model does not have front and rear tampos. Most of the mystery models don't. Some do, but this one does not. And I like how the graphics are almost ghosted when you go to certain angles, but they pop when the light hits just right. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so, one of many... 55 Chevy Hot Wheels variations that I have. I mean, they're just cool. Um, all right. Well, how about we check out now um, a couple more Chevys, basically, and another leap in time. So let's leave the 50s and go into the 60s with this Bubble Top 62 Impala. I believe it's a 62. Yeah, 62 Impala. A little bubble top there. So again, really nice. It's kind of like almost a mix between a lowrider and a pro mod car. I did add the rear lights on the back because it looked really nude without them. So a little bit of chrome for the surround, with the, just a touch of red in the middle. Discreet, but it works. Awful steering wheel. But yeah, I love the white pearl paint with the blue stripes. Really, really nice. Uh, no front details, and obviously you can see the rash there. This is a another another car that I've had for a very very long time, uh, and I acquired it loose, and it was already in you know not perfect shape. Nah, but you know I don't mind a car with a history. You know it's just you know saving to me a casting that would probably be discarded, given to a kid uh, that would have probably destroyed it as we all did with our first. Uh, batch of cars you know and uh it would be destroyed to oblivion and it's such a nice cast and i think it should be preserved even if it is not in the perfect shape that it should be there's a really big rash on the front for the rest it's not bad a flea bite here and there a little bit of chrome missing on the corners of the bumpers but yeah you know pr5s again very good roller so and that was early 60s now, how about later in the 60s? Uh, 1969. My favorite year for the Chevy Chevelle. In kind of matching color way, except we we're talking about a gloss white. Blue stripes again. All over. Big 396 uh, cubic inch V8. The SS badging. A little bit of Chevy and Goodyear sponsorship there. And the Hot Wheels Flame. You know. Again, same kind of condition, same kind of circumstances where it ended up in my collection. 
which is uh, through thrift store find. And again, just did the, the rear lights pretty subtly, not uh, too in your face, but you know, it just makes that one little touch makes the difference, you know. Again, didn't touch the front because I mean, chrome. I did add a little bit of silver for the front lights, but you can barely see since the whole front fascia is part of the chrome base. But, uh, you know, good, good, very good roller. So, 1960s. And, of course, my favorite cars of the 1960s will obviously be Mopars. Well, obvious. I mean, I've mentioned it before. I'm a Mopar guy if we're talking about models produced between, uh, let's say, uh, mid-60s to mid-70s. So those were my favorites, although there's a lot of Chevys that I find iconic. This one here we have in Hemi Orange, Super B. This is 69. Actually, no, it's a, yeah, it's Coronet Super B, but still, it's a Super B. You have the little Super B logo there. And these are the kind of cars the Hot Wheels just does it right with the, with the stance, you know. It's got a little bit of a rake, but it's not a huge rake. It just sits right. Again, you know, really good thrift store find. Guys, don't uh, don't skimp out on the thrift stores, eh? Because a lot of time you're going to find stuff that's really interesting, really cool, and just, like, fun, you know? Now, a uh, couple more Hot Wheels that we're going to be checking out. They're not quite premium. They're not quite mainline. Uh, but let's check them out nevertheless. So, next one we're going to check out is a little bit of an older release. Um, and, uh, you know, we're actually stepping a little bit back in time before we jump forward again. Um, it's going to be a car that uh, is the only exemplar I have in Hot Wheels form for this model year. It's the very first year of the... 19, 1958, so uh, first year for the Chevy Impala. And this is part, I believe, of the Cool Customs. I did pick this up new when it was released on pegs. And I mean, it's been over a decade, so don't ask me exactly when. Um, but this one, the Cool Classics, which which I really like, is the fact that they come with white wall tires, uh, or white wall five spokes, um, Spectra Flame paint, as you can see, the white is coming off a little bit off that roof. But most importantly, a metal base. So that's always cool. Metal base is always a win in my opinion. So here's your base. And uh, what a really nice car. And again, just the right amount of slam, you know. Low enough that it, that it, that it looks just great. But it doesn't impede on the roll rollability of the car so definitely loving this one not a whole lot of details if we're talking about the actual details but i find personally that paint that kind of like lilac very light purple uh color just i i couldn't leave this on the pegs i had to pick it up when i saw it so and i love white walls love white uh the white roof white contrasting roof uh you know all right and other Hot Wheels that's semi-premium, and I've shown a couple times. One uh, that I really, this is one of my really, really favorite castings for an 80s car by Hot Wheels. We are talking about the 19, very early 1980s El Camino. And this is out of the Ultra Hots, with a lot of the tampa work removed, still on the red five spokes. Um, added details for the grill and exhaust. And just, oh, and the door handles. Just a nice, nice model. Looks great with the right amount of tampa work removed. I mean, this side of a wheel swap, this thing is pretty perfect, honestly. I really like it. Um, great stance, as you can see. You know, you got some tuck in those fenders, so definitely looks good to me if we're talking about the stance. And obviously, well, ultra hot, so. You're never going to have a problem with these uh, not rolling or anything like that. Uh, now, I do have one last main line, and I'm going to use this as a transition towards a little bit of a, a change in what we're going to be checking out for the next kind of castings. We're going to check out uh, the uh, another truck, but a real one. So this is out of a uh, 
It was a five pack exclusive uh, that I actually picked up in uh, one of those three packs, uh, two packs, sorry, that uh, are very popular in Europe that uh, we did get for a while at our Toys R Us up here in Canada. So it's basically two cars uh, selected out of a five pack and they just make a twin pack out of them and there you go. But uh, you do end up uh, with a couple of exclusives and if ever they're the good ones that you wanted out of the pack, really good way to save on buying cars that you don't want just because you want a couple cars in a five pack. This is exactly that. So you got the really cool um, early to mid 2000s uh, Chevy pickup. This is a casting that's been done and redone and redone again. It's been a tea hunt, uh, you know. Uh, it's, it used to have motorcycles in the back, which this one does not have. This, I believe, is a 2017 or 2018 release, Silverado. Uh, I think it's 2018, 2017, maybe. I'm not really not sure. I have, I've had this for, I, I kept it in package for maybe four or five years before freeing it when the package started to be uh, frayed a little bit and the bubble was coming off. And uh, yeah, here's your base if ever you want to see the base on this one. 2006 copyright so original release first edition would have been 2007 and this rolls really well with those big oh5s really i mean really well this is really a good roller and i mean looks great next to the uh business in the back and party in the front or whichever way it goes of the el camino all right now let's switch over to some premium stuff um We'll start with some Hot Wheels premiums because there's a whole bunch of Hot Wheels premiums that have really, really good slam uh, slam stances. Uh, one that obviously is a no-brainer to me, staying in the Chevy truck realm, obviously, the good old square body. And uh, I believe this is an 83. So, yeah, 83. So, yeah, this model is of the model year that is the same year of birth is me so there you go 40 plus year old uh little little bugger here i mean obviously you know this is done and redone i've got a couple of variations of this truck and look it just obviously this doesn't roll as well since it's on rubber tires it does roll more silently but it's got a really good stance the the, the short box uh single cab square body from hot wheels i mean it'll, it never gets old it just looks really good and trucks do help with uh, checking out the, the, the stancification of things because, uh, you know, they're mostly tubbed. So you can actually see, as opposed to the main lines, you can actually see those wheels through the box, which is really cool. Um, yeah, golf livery, so you can't go wrong there. Definitely looks the part. And, um, yeah, there you go. Nice Chevy truck. Um, we'll check out another uh, example of a premium Hot Wheels golf livery car. Crack this one open not that a few, couple a few weeks ago uh got the uh laurel nissan laurel old school jdm japanese nostalgic car again golf livery the tiny four spokes and you know th these tiny wheels they do help to actually slam down the car it's got really really good stance you know the fender flares cover just what you need with the slightest amount of poke and you know, you just got that squared out uh, stance on the front, as you do on the back. I mean, it's a great looking car. I mean, Golf is not the livery I would have chosen first for this car, but I mean, hey, I saw this on the pegs. I ain't, I wasn't gonna leave it there. Really, really good. Um, yeah. So, I believe uh, I don't have a whole lot of uh, other Japanese cars I'm going to show you but I do have at least one that we're going to check in uh, check on um, and this would be the Hakosuka Skyline van from the cargo carriers clean kind of like grayish green livery same four spokes but all chrome like work equipped looking wheels good detail wing mirrors Cool tan interior or actually uh, it's almost butterscotch interior and great detail pretty much throughout so great looking car great great looking car um you know i'm a big fan of skylines big fan of wagons big fan of old school cars and 
big fan of stance. So again, uh, great looking, a great looking thing. And I mean, I've got all the regular release non-entertainment variations of this pretty much. So really happy to have this one in the collection loose. Um, yeah, might as well keep it wagging and go uh, with uh, one of my favorite releases in Hot Wheels Premium for, uh, um, was it, I think, three, two, two to three years ago at this point, depending when it was released, the Volvo Amazon Wagon. I mean, if, if we're talking slammed wagons, this is the straight-up textbook definition of a slammed wagon. Now, obviously... It looks like it's a two-door, so people would argue this is probably more of a shoot and break. But either way, I don't mind. Because it's all about how low it sits. Those eight spokes look great. Dark green color. All the details where you, where you need them. And again, that really cool butterscotch interior that makes the uh, very intricate roll cage more visible through those very clear windows. Again, very, very shiny base and impeccable rolling so it's one thing about hot wheels you won't get disappointed about a car not rolling un unless it's damaged it's literally damaged um let's check one more european car out of the hot wheels premium uh it's gonna be pretty much the last european car um that we're gonna be checking from hot wheels and it would be this really really nice mercedes sedan out of the autostras pretty recent set right um again dark green butterscotch interior although this one's less butter maybe more like dark caramel or something either way something to do with sweets uh i love the wheels on this the um kind of like a steelies with the color coded center and the wide lip and uh you know it's got all the touches all the badging and everything like that i mean the rear looks really good stance is on point on this car i love it i had a fun time making photos of this car for instagram uh outside you know while there was still some snow and uh yeah it just looks super good just looks really really good and i love green cars you know so that right there, definitely a lineup that uh, I dig. Um, okay, last couple of uh, last couple of uh, Hot Wheels premiums before we, we get into non Hot Wheels stuff. Uh, we've got the uh, uh, Chevy uh, Nova, sixty nine Nova. This is out of Fast and Furious, driven by Letty in one of the ten movies. I don't remember. Probably one of the last four ones. I'm assuming. Come on, buddy, focus. There we go. Great detail work. This is the first release of uh, the cast or the Fast and Furious specific cast. Um, obviously, uh, there's it's been released in semi-premium. It's had at least one, maybe two other releases in premium as well. So you know it's going around, but it's it's a it's a cool car. It's just a cool car. It's 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 really well done. And uh, I don't remember whose video I was watching that was checking out, that was reviewing the semi-premium version of this. I believe it's die cash cars maybe, but he was he was on point saying that uh, definitely this is a favorite out of the set because of the fact that it looks just clean and factory. You know, it's not an ice charger or a jump challenger or whatever else. You know, it's just a clean stock looking slightly resto modded chevy nova of in my opinion the best years 68 to 72 definitely has its place in this lineup and last hot wheels premium that we're going to be checking out before we go into alternate brands is this really cool forza motorsport branded ford falcon xb gt or is it xb or xa it's a XB, yeah, XB GT, the 73. My favorite, favorite classic Aussie muscle car. Best looking, in my opinion. Do prefer it over the Monero of the same year, although close second. This is just really, really nice car. It's got the turbine wheels, staggered. It's got that a little bit of that muscle car rake, but it's still slammed as F, you know? 
as FM. Um, looks really good, rolls really good. This is an older release. I think this is from 2016 or 2017 or something like that. Uh, and the mainline version of this came out uh, in the late 2000s, I believe. Maybe early 2010s, I think late 2000s. But you know, you gotta pay respect where respect is due. Aussie, Aussie Muscle, nothing to... Uh, nothing uh to uh frown upon these guys love their engines and their v8s and their mods and their ludicrous burnouts just as much as the other guy if not more so shout out to all the people watching from oz uh love those uh aussie fords and and holdens and the chryslers too i do like the uh the uh, chrysler chargers from uh, australia as well those uh early 70s ones especially look really good so now let's jump into something else where to start let's check let's check out some maestos let's check out some maestos because maestos got some really good stuff if we're talking about the slam stuff so i don't have a i have i have a five five uh, cars we'll go through them quickly from my oldest to newest acquisition i guess um so the one that i've had longest and this was an eBay purchase, probably, I don't know, 17, 16 years ago, something like that. And I've showed it off several videos. Good old S-Class, AMG S, uh, I believe S55, this one, um, out of the uh, Maisto Players series. Just looks good. It's got the stance. It is slammed. Uh, you know, the wheel offset obviously is very mid 2000s, uh, even I uh, dare I say early 2000s or late 90s. But I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Looks so good. It's got all the details. This is definitely premium casting to, in my eyes, at least. And I mean, it may be a Maisto, but it's got the metal base, the rubber tires, all the separate intricate parts and on the inside, the two tone seats, uh, you know. All the body details, the license plates, really cool rims behind which you can see disc brakes. They do turn with the wheels, but still, you know, the exhaust is done, part of the base. This is a really good model. And I mean, this was literally a couple of, you know, a little bit cheaper than a Hot Wheels Premium. And in certain in certain instances, if we're talking about, amongst others, scale, detail and proportion, this does eat out the hot wheels a little bit so definitely like that definitely like that um one also that i bought off ebay mid to late 2000s not new they may have even been part of the same order basically is this really really cool and my favorite in my collection fox body mustang again slam down same collection it's not it's not part of the players this one's got an opening hood with a super detailed pimped out engine um, but it does have a plastic base, which is something that the uh, Maestro did transition to, and to and and up to today, still the same thing. You got plastic bases on uh, pretty much all the Maestro premiums now. But uh, yeah, this is a really nice one. I don't remember which series this is out of. Uh, all Stars, I think. Could it be All Stars? Yeah, it is All Stars. It's written on the license plate on the back. It's hard to make out there, but. Yeah, all stars. So, I still had a lot of cool collections in the uh, in the two thousands, and uh, they're slept upon now. So they're easy to get for fairly cheap, except for the super popular castings. Obviously, they'll still command a premium. Um, we do have also in a very two thousand style, pretty much same era, same collection. Um, all stars as the one we just checked out. We have this uh, sixty seven Cadillac coupe. DeVille with the big chrome wheels, double looking wheels. You can see those disc brakes in the back. I mean, these are pretty cool features, honestly. Pretty cool features. Uh, rubber tires, plastic base, a little bit of detail on the bottom. Front and back, all detailed up. The license plates, the interior is done. You can see that separate wheel. Maisto for their premium lines like this. And Jada were really, really big on the chrome steering wheels. So. Uh, next we do have, uh, I would almost call this basically the then and now of the Maisto Slam Cadillacs. Uh, sh 
part of the showcase. We got the STS, the last gen STS before we went to the XT6 and all that other stuff. Uh, last of the, uh, I believe it's last of the North Star engines as well. If we're talking about uh, the 4.6 and, uh, and the STS V, then you had the uh, 4.4 supercharge and whatnot, but pretty much the same features. You know, the wheels are really cool on this one. They're 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 different. They're different. Uh, black uh, center with the chrome lip, some pearl yellow paint looks really cool, and um, yeah, just cool car overall. Looks really good. Same thing. It's from the All Stars as well. You can see the license plate is a little bit bigger, so it's easier to read. All Stars. All right, now very recent release. And I think this qualifies since it's a lowrider. Is this a really, really cool 59 Impala, so second year Impala lowrider with the adjustable suspension? The suspension is kind of hard to get up and down, I find, uh, as it is not necessarily, you know, I don't know if to adjust it, I'm supposed to take it apart or not. I have taken it apart once, but. Um, you know, I've just put it down to the slam position and just left it as is for now. It's got the tiny wire wheels, look like to be about 13 inch. If it was uh, transported to one to one, uh, white wall tires, very metallic green paint, lots of flake, white top, and the cool lowrider style pinstriping slash artwork on the car. Looks absolutely great, and that is part of the Maisto Design uh, Lowriders line. So, well, there you go. That, I find, looks really good. And, I mean, for the price, this is, again, about 2 to, 2 to $3 cheaper than a Hot Wheels Premium. Does not have the metal base. It does have plastic base. But, I mean, movable suspension, undercarriage details a little bit, rubber tires, very well done detailing throughout and the interior is a mile better you have even got if you can see in the back there you even got that little plaque that uh low rider guys tend to put in the back of the cars i mean i'm not super super deep into low rider culture i am very interested by it but you know there's not a whole lot of it up here in canada so there is some we have our luxurious low rider crew that uh, represents up here but you know, not a whole lot. Now, we're going to stay in the lowriders, but we're going to jump to... I'm actually going to push this back a little bit. Just to make a little bit more room. So you can see all the cars at the end. Make a nice little line up here. Uh, that looks good. There we go. Good. All right. So we're going to be checking out afterwards. We're going to kind of transition into Jada because these... Uh, these ones here are very much the direct competition that Jada had at the time. So we're gonna check out some Jadas. Um, now we're gonna start with the Lowrider. It's a gift from my buddy Jake, Strictly Diecast. Uh, cool Lincoln Town Car, one of the few, very few Lincolns that I have in the collection actually. Um, so this is typical Jada of the 2000s. These are approximately 150th to 155th scale, depending on the casting. Um, you know, again, you've got the white walls. You've got a little bit of pinstriping here and there. Very discreet. Got the Continental kit. You got the wire wheels. And you got all the details that are painted in. And uh, you got the nice uh, burgundy red interior. The brown roof. Obviously, the big sound system on the back, because, I mean, in the 2000s, the sound system was quite the important feature in a car, you know, since we didn't have the infotainment screens and all that jazz. So, yeah, that is definitely one that I love. And, of course, Cadillac counterpart that when I unboxed the Jake's Care Package, I did do a quick comparo. Here's your Cadillac competition to that Lincoln Town Car, the nice uh, Sedan DeVille in black with the lower uh, chrome 
well, it should be chrome here. It's silver, but you know, lower chrome uh, body cladding. I actually spotted one of these, a stock one, uh, this week. Not, uh, not far from work. Snap the pic. I'll probably be posting that uh, at a certain point on Instagram. So it'll probably already be posted by the time you watch this. So, yeah, I love this one too. This is one that I ordered off eBay probably around 05, 06, 07, around that. When uh, eBay was actually going strong for me. The shipping fees were not ridiculous, and uh, you could actually get good stuff without the necessarily uh, having to pay, you know, twice what the cost of the item is in shipping to get it shipped over to you. And obviously, well, diecast was just different back then if we're talking about its popularity and the type of people that collected and sold it, uh, well, up to a certain extent. Now, uh, I'm going to check out Jada Chevy. C10 truck, so the pre uh, pre square body style. This was actually also a thrift store find. A couple flea bites, got some flames going on and everything. But you know, typical Jada of the 2000s. I mean, shaved door handles, slam down to the ground. I mean, these these also do roll really well, eh? So um, definitely, I like that truck a lot. I'll try and speed it up a little bit for you guys here because this is getting kind of long. It's already long. Uh, then we got some uh, imports. Also from Jada. This is part of the uh, D-Spec. Is it D-Spec? Or Option D. Sorry. Option D line. We've got your FDRX7 with the Duluc sponsorship. These do actually look like Duluc wheels from the uh, mid-2000s. The six spokes like that. You got the big high-rise high wing. Very discreet lip kit on the front. Just like a good old tuner Mazda, basically. Which, who doesn't love an FD, right? Then, of course, I showed this one off not too long ago in my Toyota showcase, so I won't spend too much time with it. The SC300 in that very drift slash show looking livery. And then we've got a bunch of V dubs, basically, from Jada as well. Starting with the drop top, we've got the uh, classic. Beetle drop top, and this would be the Heb Mueller convertible. Heb Mueller convertible, it's a little bit different as it had the extended rear. Uh, it's kind of like more if, if, if uh, the 356 Speedster has an equivalence at Volkswagen, the Heb Mueller Volkswagen convertible is it. Very, very cool. Looks great. Great steering wheel in chrome. These are all metal base, eh, by the way. So very cool pieces of old school tuner car, modified car nostalgia. You also have the coupe, Carmen Ghia. This is actually first Carmen Ghia I put in the collection, or I acquired for the collection. These, uh, that, this, and the Heb Mueller were bought at the same time, and uh, they are off eBay. Bought when these were actually being released. And uh, yeah, you got the Steelies with the dog dish caps, and they are going to be staggered the way it should be. So yes, diameter is the same. It's the width and the depth of the wheels and tires with that narrowed rear that makes up the staggeredness. And note how all these are screwed together, right? So very easy to sw swap out the wheels from one model to the other and, you know, just set them up as you'd like to have them set up, so... Uh, we do have also, well, I love vans, and what's better than a van? A slam van. VWT1. Look at those wheels. Look how tucked those are in the back. Insanely cool. Love this van. Love the two-tone black and uh, beige. And it's a Jada, so you're going to get all the same details. You see that steering wheel? You know, they're easily recognizable, to say the least. Um, I'll put this one here. Try to push this even further a little bit. There we go. Like that. There we go. Push these up a little bit too. Oh, not too much. Don't fall off the table, guys. Sorry about that. Just need a little bit more room. You know what happens if when you're filling up a table? You know, it'll eventually fill up, so. All right. Um, a couple green lights, 
the, the, these are all fairly recent cracks, so I won't spend too much time out of them. Uh, so one uh, that uh, is my most recent crack out of these three, I believe, is this really cool Cadillac Coupe de Ville. It's a black bandit from Greenlight. You know, Greenlight, metal on metal, rubber tires, extremely accurate details, and the murdered outlook of these black bandits on certain castings are just awesome. I really like this. This is, I believe, I, I believe I have two other iterations of this casting. And this is the first one I was able to get my hands on. Because the Black Bandits are not as sought after as other lines. And we're going to give one last nod to the Lowriders with this box Chevy Caprice. That's out of the Cali California Lowriders Series 2. Without the Continental Kit from the one from Series 1. And, um... Nice bright orange. Yeah, just looks great. Just looks like a factory car on hydraulics and wire wheels. And last green light is this really cool 64 Impala. It's not as slammed. It's a little bit slammed, but not as slammed. It's closer to stock ride height, but this is basically one that just looks good because it, it looks like it's set up to race under the hood and through the wheel setup. But it's still got that that lowered stance, you know. It's still uh, still pretty low, so I think it counts. I definitely think it counts. And the last car we're gonna be checking out is my favorite favorite slammed car, um, at least of this genre, and it is my favorite casting from M2. We are talking about 1949 Mercury Coupe. Would have be, it'd be, it'd be technically a Mercury Meteor, but I mean, the Merc Coupe, it just goes by Merc Coupe. So it's got everything that you would want out of a lowrider. This is part of the Auto Driver series, so the carded ones. And this was at the very beginning of those carded ones. Um, I've had this since new, picked it off of eBay, not the pegs. This is before I was actively peg hunting and just buying stuff off eBay, ripping everything open. Everything was displayed out of the package. And this is the first M2 Machines car that I bought ever. So there you go. End it on this. Put this right in the middle. And I really do hope you enjoyed this rather long showcase. But I love doing these, just finding a theme, filling up the table, and just checking out some really awesome castings from all kinds of manufacturers and different eras too. You know, from the basic stuff to the semi-premium stuff, to the all-out, more premium stuff. So definitely we're going to be adding more slammington to the collection as time goes by and on that i will let you go bid you farewell hope you enjoyed like comment subscribe and um i'll catch you on the next one stay safe happy hunting Bye bye